Hi guys, I'm uh, Ben from Trisled. If you don't know, uh, I'm in the, the pattern shop of our new factory. Um, there's not much else done with our new factory. It's a bit of a construction zone there, and a bit of a construction zone there, but it certainly is nice to have clean space to develop patterns and moulds for our new shapes. Today, I want to talk about Aquila 3, uh, our new model, which is on the way. But I also just want to take you through the history of Aquila and the design rationale so you can better understand where Aquila 3 is coming from, why it's taken so long to develop it, and why we believe it's going to be better than anything we've done before. The Aquila project started in 2010, and the goal was to build a uh, elite level HPV, which was still in reach of, of school groups, and offered um, class leading safety. So we have the best volume fraction, or fiber density, vacuum infused, full integral cell composite shells which has been a really major success of Aquila in providing great levels of safety for the new levels of speeds that new inexperienced riders are going to find. The Aquila 1 achieved that. The limitation of the Aquila 1 was that its stability was really lacking. We were using geometry from previous generations of vehicles and we actually got a major improvement in aerodynamics which meant these vehicles going faster and the riders were getting themselves into trouble. So we knew with Aquila 1 there were a few things we needed to change. Number one was we needed a much better stability platform. Uh, so we went about developing a whole new chassis with a lower centre of gravity, longer wheelbase, slightly more track width, grabbing a bit more stance. And Aquila 2 has been a really major success in as far as its improvement over Aquila 1, as well as uh, it just refinements that we made. The biggest refinement we made is to look at the shell a little differently. Instead of looking at the shell as a full fairing, we started looking at it as a safety device. And we broke the shell into two elements, the, the front of the shell and the back of the shell. Now here are just the, the patterns, if you like, for the back of the shell. So this is the Aquila 2 pattern from, from about six years ago that we pulled out of storage. Now, what we realized was this back section was actually the cell. This is what keeps the riders safe. It keeps the riders' heads safe, the shoulders, most importantly spine. So by taking the nose cone out of that and actually creating this as what we call the safety cell meant that we could focus our composites around creating uh, a crash resistant and, and capsule to protect the rider. This was really successful, we were really happy with this and it meant that the nose cone could regularly be replaced and is bonded on which means that we could use that as a little bit of crumple zone. We could actually change the composite makeup of the nose cone versus the shell, so that we could absorb the bigger impacts with barriers when riders really make big mistakes. With the Quill 3, we've carried that through. You can see it still has the same sort of overlaps in this pattern uh, to, to work for those uh, bond on of the nose cone. There are a few changes I'd just like to show you about the Quill 3 pattern. Um, if I can just get you to come over with the 2. This is the edge where the nose cone bonds on to the Aquila 2. And you can see that it's got the pod here, where the uh, would you, anyone who owns an Aquila 2 or has spent some time in them will know that the bottom of this pod wears down when the riders get up on two wheels. Uh, it's designed to sort of give them a little bit of grace, so that it strands there and hopefully prevents them from going completely over. The downside is that it's wearing into the safety cell, the expensive bit of the shell, the bit with all the time in it, which means when the Aquila 2 get a bit older, often some repairs need to be made there. So, the obvious change from in the Aquila 3 pattern is you'll see that the nose cone bond goes much further back now. And that means that we get both the cell and the nose cone and the, and the glue which holding them two together all in this region. Lots of material. And this means that when uh, the, the shell gets older after a couple of seasons, hopefully most of the damage sustained from crashes is going to be all in the nose cone, which is the replaceable element. About Aquila 3. When we finished Aquila 2, we honestly believed that we had what I like to refer to as the, the stability platform aerodynamics match. In other words, the stability of the vehicle matched its performance. Obviously, we were under a lot of pressure to build a smaller, faster one like everybody else in the sport would do to go faster and what we've done in the past. The handbrake on that for me was that we sell vehicles for to riders of a wide variety of levels of experience and from entry level right through to elite teams. 
If we made Aquila 2 smaller, we were simply going to create a vehicle which was too dynamic for inexperienced riders and be in the same situation that we were when we developed Aquila 1. So before we developed Aquila 3, we knew we had to develop a chassis with greater stability. Uh, those who have followed us know that I went through a whole exploratory range of four-wheel vehicles, seeing if that was going to be the answer. I do believe there's a future in four-wheel vehicles, however, we weren't able to get performance out of the four-wheelers that we needed to make the switch now. What we did learn was some things about trikes that we could make uh, them handle better and have a greater level of stability and as a bonus, less frontal area. And that's all centred around our Generation 3 chassis. The Generation 3 chassis is something I'll just talk about in other videos, but I want you to understand that the Aquila 3 is designed to fit onto the Generation 3 chassis as will one of our entry levels called the Hornet. So the Aquila 3 pattern is 7% uh, smaller than the Aquila 2, uh, so the speed demons get what they want there. Um, and it's uh, so rough terms, it's around about 65 centimeter lower of their head height, which is the one that most people are interested in. Uh, its underbody aerodynamics have been completely reworked to, to encapsulate the Generation 3 chassis and rider better. Uh, as I spoke about, the nose current dynamic has been kept and improved to offer the safety levels that the Aquila 2 has, and hopefully even better. The slightly smaller size means the aerodynamics uh, will obviously be faster, but it also has a bonus that you get material strength from smaller shapes. So we actually think the Aquila 3 will actually be stronger than the Aquila 2. Uh, you'll notice just subtly how much more developed the rear wheel is. Um, and you'll notice there's, like, I don't know if you can capture it, but there's some, some stuff going on underneath to, to, to uh, fit the chassis in. Um, one of the major features of the Generation 3 chassis and Aquila 3 is our new carbon fibre high volume uh, wheels, which we're getting amazing performance characteristics out of. Uh, but it has been, we've had to completely rework our shapes uh, to, to fit those wheels in. And that's part of well, not much of the delay in us getting the new model ready is to have to rework our nose cone mould twice and our body mould twice to fit this chassis that we're obviously extremely happy with uh, into, into the aerodynamics. Uh, you'll also just sorry, just quickly show you in here, um, we have more features inside the wheel arch now. Uh, this actually grabs directly onto the chassis. Uh, so the chassis has a lot more hold than the Aquila 2. If we just go over, you'll see the Aquila 2 pattern. Uh, has just we just literally trimmed that out to fit and have a, a high um, high lots of uh, layers here where the, um, where the where the chassis would bolt on. In this case, we're actually using features to create that strength. So we're expecting the front hoop interaction in the cell to have a lot more strength, which is um, where most of the major impact we're seeing in the vehicles are. Uh, we're just going to reset now, and I'm going to put the pattern side by side so that you guys can just see how much smaller and, and how it's different. In the, uh, in the two shapes from a quill 2 to a quill 3. Uh, I hope that captures it, you can see the differences. Uh, it's mostly, as I said, in the head height. Um, I'd like to point out that the window line and the eye line of the rider has not been changed between Aquila 2 and Aquila 3. A little bonus to that is Aquila 2 customers, your windscreens and windows will actually fit the Aquila 3. Uh, but the design reason for it is the eye line, the visibility, the outside visibility rather of Aquila 2 has had lots of positives, so we wanted to make sure we kept that. And we basically lowered the eye line to match the, low, the lower chassis and, and kept all the other proportions. Um, uh, at this point, I'd like to really thank the people who have backed me very early in this project. We had several pre-orders for Aquila 3, sight unseen, and I think that is amazing, and you guys are amazing, and I'm really, really grateful. And we're doing our best to, to get this done and get it to the start line for you. I hope this helps you appreciate the work behind the scenes to get into it, and why it's taking a little longer than we hope. Uh, for those of you who are vehicle shopping, uh, I've got a lot of confidence in where we're heading right now. I hope that this might inspire you guys, if you're interested in your vehicle, to come and see us and maybe join the order list. Uh, we're expecting to roll out first vehicles in the, in the next couple of months.